the time is upon us. A Linux video with benchmarks. Not just the 3950X. I tried. I've been super busy. I wanted to get out a video just of the 3950X for the Linux channel because I think the Linux channel has some cool stuff going on in terms of like, you know, the users and the kinds of things that people on the Linux channel would do with the 3950X, 16 core monster CPU for an AM4 socket. But with Threadripper launching so close and so many of you having so much disposable income for building the five year system, I mean, a surprisingly large number of people in our audience built systems around the 2990WX. There's a lot of support threads on the forum. Everything is launching today. Intel is bringing its best, which is the 9900KS, not the 10980XE. AMD has brought their best. It's in the slim, slim box because there's no in the box cooler. It's a 3950X CPU, 16 cores for AM4. But also we have Threadripper, which is dominating. Yes, yes, it's gonna be completely nuts. 16 cores in a machine this big. This is a case from Sliger. So this video is not about this case, but I'm gonna tease sort of the next video because it's gonna be on the main level one channel and not the level one Linux channel where this video is. But um, Sliger sent me some cases. There's this one, which is micro ATX. And this one, which is full ATX, but look how tiny this case is. Super tiny, solid steel construction. Sliger is known for making industrial cases. So these are industrial, a little bit boutique, if you will, uh, in terms of, you know, they're not mass produced units. These are, these are made by people that are talented and, uh, you know, sort of, they've been working in the industrial sector for a long time. They know how to work with steel and they know how to work with higher end components. As configured here, I've got plexiglass side panels but you can get it with vented side panels or solid side panels, different top, configurable with a handle. But even if you're not interested in the Sliger case, you might be interested in this if you're into small form factor computers. Notice there's three slots at the back here. This is not just for a triple slot GPU. Sliger actually sells PCI Express 3 bifurcation cables. So that means I can run two PCI Express by eight peripherals off of an ITX motherboard and not have to do any hackery of the case whatsoever. But for that, you'll have to tune into the build video that's coming to the level one channel soon. This is the Linux channel and we're gonna do the benchmarks. For Linux benchmarking, I use the Pharonix test suite. We've got, yes, the 3950X, the 3900X. We've got the 9900KS. The 9900KS, a completely bonkers CPU, and all of this basically works out of the box. We've got the new Threadrippers, 24 cores, 1399 US, and 32 cores, 1999 US. These are class leading prices. They are more expensive than anything else that's out there. The 10980 XE is also launching. That uh, CPU is 4.8 gigahertz on one core out of the box. <laughs> and uh, it's a nice CPU. If you're into Intel, Intel's basically plug and play. You just set up your computer, you set it up and you're good to go. The 3950X basically is faster than the 10980XE out of the box. Out of the box, we're out of the box. The 10980 is not faster than the 3950X. An AM4 CPU with its dual channel memory configuration and relatively modest motherboard lineup is running circles around a 10980XE for most things except for AVX512 and some other stuff. Now, if you're into scientific applications, there are some outliers like MATLAB, there's the MATLAB performance on Intel, but the MATLAB performance on Intel is a little misleading because MATLAB actually misdetects the CPUs. It doesn't think AMD CPUs are capable of AVX2. If you tweak MATLAB, then it'll claw back the performance and all of a sudden we're on a level playing field and Intel versus uh, AMD on that 3950X, not, not looking too good. The pricing's a little weird though. The 10980XE at around 979, seems like that's a pretty good deal because an 18 core CPU in the last generation would be around $1,700, give or take. And so we've, you know, we're basically at half price, but the Threadripper 24 core is $1,400. That is a, that is a pricey CPU. Remember the 24 core uh, from last gen was around 1200 ish. I mean, there was the retail launch pricing and then there was the micro center pricing. So 1200 ish. So the prices have moved up a bit. The 32 core was around 1700 last gen, the 2990 WX, which is a CPU that I love on Linux. It's great on Linux. Windows, Windows is a little sketchy. Linux is great. But now the 32 core, it's 1999. So again, it's moved up in price. However, the 24 core and the 32 core for the kinds of things that you're likely to be doing under Linux, 
so far outperform the 10980 XE that the, the Threadripper CPUs are the best do everything CPUs for the desktop on the planet right now. Whether you consider high end desktop or, or not necessarily high end desktop, if you want the do literally everything desktop CPU, there is nothing better than the Threadripper 3000 series CPUs. And there is no better CPU on the planet right now with those qualifications than the Threadripper 32 core. So if you're into scientific applications and you want to have 32 cores and you know, you can't scale up to 64 cores or a dual socket 64 core on Epic, which is more cores at a significantly slower clock speed. 32 core Threadripper, it's hard to go wrong. It supports unbuffered error correcting memory, depending on the motherboard, depending on the, the vendor, but the benchmarks, the benchmarks are bananas. I, I don't know how AMD has done this. The power utilization, everything, everything is better across the board. Also in our comparison, we also have the 7980XE that is overclocked and delitted under a custom loop. Now, in my review on the level one channel of the 3950X, I said it's an incredible CPU, but it's not for gaming. And so, you know, Linux gaming especially, it's not for gaming, but Linux isn't really the best operating system yet for gaming. Although there are some really good gaming experiences and progress is being made that I'm very excited about in terms of Lutris and the stuff that Valve is doing and that kind of thing. The 3900X is a much better choice, much better value, if you want to do a little bit of gaming and a bunch of other stuff. If you want to do gaming and a little bit of other stuff, the 8-core CPU, like the 3700X, is the best. And if you're primarily interested in gaming, the 3600X is an unparalleled rival. So AMD is kind of dominating the whole price stack here, which is sort of surprising. Now, to be, to be sure, the 9900K and the 9900KS are the best very high-end gaming CPUs. But in order to take advantage of what these CPUs offer you, you have to buy the very most expensive graphics cards. The 2080 Ti or the rumored 2080 Ti Super, which is I don't know anything about, you would need those kinds of GPUs to take advantage of the kinds of things, the kinds of performance that you see from the 9900KS. Overall, the round trip, like the reason that it's like that is the round trip latency from CPU to memory and back again is quite low, but because everything goes through the IO die on both the Ryzen desktop CPUs and also Threadripper, AMD's at a little bit of a disadvantage there. But in terms of microarchitecture, cache, and improvements that AMD has made to their platform, they just, they get it all back. And you can see that in all of the benchmarks. As I'm rambling through here and you just look at the benchmarks or you wanna check out the open benchmarking link at the bottom, there's not really any anomalies this time around either. It's like, oh, this program performs really well, but this one doesn't quite perform as well. Remember the 2990WX on Indigo? Remember all the scheduler insanity that I had to do? You know, we were looking at a, about a three to a 3.2 3.2 if you really just let the CPU stretch its legs and you had ridiculous cooling with the 2990WX. You want to take a guess what the current 32 core CPU has? You've probably already looked at the benchmark. You know it's over five. That's almost doubling. That's crazy. This is the single biggest generational leap that we have seen in desktop CPUs in 10 years. Some of that is owing to architecture improvements in the Threadripper, you know, 3960. 3970. Some of it is owing to the fact that AMD is not counting on software to catch up. They're like, oh, yeah, hmm. I guess it's a little problematic to deal with uh, the fact that some of the, the uh, NUMA nodes in the 2990WX don't have uniform access to memory. Okay, cool. We'll just work around that. We'll deal with that. Now, they do give you an option in the BIOS that lets you select. If you, can, if you want to, you can run up to four NUMA nodes on your Threadripper socket. But um, there's really two local memory controllers on the quad channel thing. It kind of works together. That's going to be a whole, like, that's a whole separate thing. I don't want to get into that in this video. Out of the box, it's one NUMA node, and you don't need to worry about it. And the performance is utterly, utterly insane. Compiling programs, you can, you can compile Firefox in a matter of minutes. Linux, less than a minute. Compile the Linux kernel, again, Phronix test suite. All of these benchmarks are just, everything completes so fast that these benchmarks are basically meaningless. So if you do a lot of stuff with virtual machines or compiling, or you just want the fastest machine that you can get, Threadripper, surely there's gotta be a catch. All right, let's talk about the downsides. So first up, the 10 series CPUs 
The thing that is the best thing about the 10 series CPUs, the 10980XE, and to a certain extent the 9980 and the 7980, is that the motherboards are actually pretty kick-ass. Uh, the Designator, the, the Gigabyte Designator, uh, X299X10G, that is a dual Intel 550 on board. This is pretty much the best X299 board that there is out there that I've tested so far. Because it's got the dual Intel LAN, it has the direct-to-CPU M.2 slots. It's got a pretty intelligent PCIe layout. I've also got the Sage WS. The Sage WS is not a new motherboard, but it is, it's from Asus, and it's got a lot of PCIe slots. This is actually Epos Vox old system, so if you want to take a look at this, and we got the deleted CPU here. I threw this in the roundup, so big thanks to Epos Vox for letting me borrow his system. So, there are comparable AM4 motherboards, right? I don't think so. There are $1,000 AM4 motherboards that have a lot of bling and a lot of RGB, but there's not an X570 AM4 motherboard with a dual onboard 10 gig Intel. The only board that comes closest is the ASRock board that we used in Steve's NAS build, and no X16 slots, there's no PCIe 4. The X570 chipset on that kind of a motherboard would really be kind of super nice, but there's not really a ridiculously high-end X570 motherboard. The Gigabyte Aorus Extreme comes closest, I think, of all of the boards, and it does have 10 gig, but not dual Intel 10 gig, so it's a little a little odd. The X299 board seems like it would have a higher bomb cost um, than the X570, but the X570 costs a little bit more, so sort of odd. The Designator 10G also has, you know, Thunderbolt and all this kind of stuff, and there's something weird going on with Thunderbolt on AMD platforms. I'll have to revisit that at another video. One important note. So the motherboards that I used for all the testing was the MSI Creator TRX40 and the ASRock Zenith 2 Extreme. The settings that I used on those were the completely out of the box defaults, except for XMP. Turn on XMP on. On the Asus ROG, it's referred to as DOCP, but uh, it's XMP on the, the MSI. Both Asus and MSI, I think, play little games with the CPU clocking. So I don't know that the CPUs are 100% running at AMD recommended specs. The numbers that AMD gave us for the CPU was about 280 watts. And like 280 to 290 watts is what I observed in uh, Hardware Info, like what Hardware Info was reporting, which is just a little on the other side of, mm, there's some shenanigans being played here. Running each board with the 24 core and the 32 core CPU, I got just different enough performance numbers that I think that it's possible that MSI and ASUS are uh, squeezing a little bit more performance out of the CPU by running it slightly, slightly above AMD spec. So that may factor in in the results, but this platform was shockingly stable. I don't use the word mature lightly. I mean, you know how nitpicky I am and good Lord, AMD's done a nice job. In terms of other negatives, really the only other one is the machine check exception. So. There's a kernel bug. If you try to install Ubuntu 19.10 and some other distros, you need to turn the machine check exception stuff off. So it's MCE equal off. There's a guide in the level one forum for compiling your kernel the Fedora way and also the Debian way. And it's a one line patch to the Linux kernel. What happens is the kernel panics because uh, it tries to create the uh, machine check exception devices in SysFS and there's a duplicate file name or there's a duplicate resource name. And so the kernel creates a machine check exception resource in sysfs and then it goes to create another one and the number it like that resource shouldn't actually have a machine check exception because there's already one for that processor id and so it tries to create another one can't and panics that really should be in a try catch block or maybe it should honor uh mce equal three which is supposed to catch those kinds of machine check exceptions and ignore them but because this is such a trivial problem uh it's not the machine check exception stuff is not caught in that way. So it's not really that there's a problem with the hardware. It's just taking advantage of stuff that hasn't been there before. So literally a one-line patch to the kernel, you're up and going. You can uh, update the latest Fedora 31 as of the time of this video in about 15 minutes. It's not really a big deal. You can also run Fedora 30, but if you update your kernel on Fedora 30, it will um, be problematic. Like you're, you'll get a kernel panic and it'll just sort of hang on boot. But you can add to the kernel line at the grub screen MCE equal off. They'll turn off all the machine check exception stuff and you'll be able to boot into pretty much any distro. You just spam the E key so that you can get into Grub and, and edit your, your boot line. Uh, pop is a little trickier. 
because no grub, but come to the forum. Not a big deal. We'll have it sorted. And good lord, it's fast. Performance governor, all that stuff works. You can see that in the Pharaonics benchmarks. This is a relatively mature feeling platform on Threadripper. Look, when, when Ryzen launched and Ryzen Zen Plus and Ryzen 3000 on the desktop launched, uh, a little rough around the edges. Of course, the same thing can be said for Intel. When they first launched X299, it was terrible. Now that we're on the third launch of X299, we're in a much better situation in terms of stability. It's actually pretty solid. They worked out all the problems with the USB controllers. I love these third generation X299 boards. There's, I've got a couple X299 systems here in the office. I'm probably gonna just keep the CPU and swap motherboards because the motherboards are that much better and and because I have them. But uh, yeah, X299 and Threadripper both are pretty mature platforms. The pricing, especially for the you know 12 and 14 core, is not bad for the X299 platform. Nobody ever got fired for buying Intel, but if you want the fastest CPU on the planet, Threadripper. It lives up to the name. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a quickie introduction, a quickie Linux overview. You, you are gonna have the time of your life on Linux with that 32 core monster, let me tell you. I'm signing out and I'll see you in the forum. They've worked out all the problems with the USB controllers. I love these third generation X299 boards. There's, I've got a couple X299 systems here in the office. I'm probably gonna just keep the CPU and swap motherboards because the motherboards are that much better and, and cause I have them. But uh, yeah, X299 and Threadripper both are pretty mature platforms. The pricing, especially for the you know 12 and 14 core is not bad for the X299 platform. Nobody ever got fired for buying Intel, but if you want the fastest CPU on the planet, Threadripper. It lives up to the name. I'm Wendell, this is level one. This has been a quickie introduction, a quickie Linux overview. You, you are gonna have the time of your life on Linux with that 32 core monster, let me tell you. I'm signing out and I'll see you in the forum.